In part five of our video, we'll be talking about installing the electronics in the fuselage, how all that is wired up, and discuss a little bit about the decals as they went on. In this segment, we're going to take a look at the electronics, and since I had them out of the airplane, I thought it'd be easier to describe some of the things that are happening inside the airplane laid out on the table instead of all crammed together in that tight fuselage. So let's just take a quick look at the plain vanilla uh, set up for the airplane. So we're going to start then of course with the motor. The motor's got the three wires connected to the electronic speed control. Now if you've had this apart or if in your model you have to put the motor in one way and the speed control in from the back say for example, it's a good thing to identify which wires are connected. So in this particular case the black and black and blue and blue and red and red. However you know that you want when viewed from the rear the motor to spin uh, clockwise and if when you've got your airplane back together it's spinning the opposite way the way to do that is just to switch either any two of these three wires and that'll change the sensors in the ESC the way it reads the uh, the rotation of the magnets in the motor and it'll reverse the flow of the motor one of the things I like to do when I uh, have a motor like this that maybe isn't color coded I just use a china marker like this one a little paint pen and then I can put like one line on each side of one connection two on each side of the other and none on the third and then that'll allow me to know how I've got them paired up so once I've got it rotating the right way I go ahead and make those marks so when I put the airplane back together, if I have to be using a forceps in a tight spot in the nose to get the motor and the ESC connected, I'll know what wires to get. Again, so leaving the ESC, the big flat plate on the bottom of the ESC is the heat sink. So um, to dissipate some of the heat from the electronics that is happening here in the ESC, the uh, signal wire and the power wire from the BEC come out of the other end right here. And so they'll go into the throttle. The throttle is going to uh, control the speed. And then the red wire from the um, this ribbon wire coming from the ESC is going to provide the um, power for the receiver and thus to the servos and so forth. Now this receiver happened to have a satellite receiver to it. Yours may or may not. And then you just simply plug in the battery uh, on the other end. In this case I've got a four cell battery and so when you plugged in the battery the ESC would count the cells, give you a beep for each cell, give you the go code, um, the little light in the receiver would be on and you'd be ready to go. But as you know we were also going to then add lights and we were going to add a sound system. So let's take a look how those components are going to complicate the wiring just a little bit. Okay, as promised, as you can see, the wiring with those extra components did make things a little bit more complicated. But really, when you go through it, it's, it's not that bad. We're just kind of hanging things on to the main power bus. And, and that's kind of represented for, the, for this model with just coming from the battery through the main lines, to the ESC, to the motor. So that part really isn't any different except we've inserted a couple of components in line. First let's talk about the sound system. The sound system came with a power tap that had these smaller wires that led to the power input on the sound module. The way that worked is that it had a, a sh short piece of wire with these XT60 plugs on it. Now you remember the ESC down here had the 4 millimeter banana plugs on it. And so rather than cut them off, which is an option, I tend not to want to change things permanently. I just soldered together an adapter that had the 4 millimeter on one side and then the uh, XT60 on the other. I got these just uh, at Amazon.com. I got a package of 10 or 20 of them for 4 or 5 bucks. So that was pretty easy to do. So that plugs into this tap that came with the sound system and then it just continues on uh, to the battery. So with the sound system itself then it came with a Y connector because you're going to have to split the signal from the throttle channel of the receiver. And so with that in place the sound system um, signal came on one end of the Y connector and then the throttle control from the ESC 
came to the other end of the Y connector. Now you can see that I have the power pin from the ESC line removed from the plug and I'll fold that back and tape it but I just wanted to show you that. I'll talk about that when we talk about the uh, the UBEC or the Universal uh, BEC in just a moment but that's what that is if you've noticed that. So then over here we have the power coming into the module, the signal coming into the module, and then we've got the speaker that we have over here. And you remember earlier we uh, carved out a place for the speaker right on the center of gravity on the top of the wing inside the fuselage for that to sit. So that's the connection for the sound system. There are a lot of sound systems out there. They're all going to connect in a very similar manner. Next. Let's talk a little bit about the universal BEC. Now this one will take anywhere from 7 volts input to 26 volts of input. So you can use this with a lot of, a lot of cells. Most of the time you're going to use one of these when you've got a fairly complicated electronic uh, setup or you're using a lot of, of servos and, and electric retracts and so forth because it takes the stress off the ESC because the BEC mounted inside the ESC is not providing the power. Now I took this pin out as I just mentioned because I don't want power coming from the, the UBEC into the receiver and from the um, BEC into the receiver. In fact the BEC is probably going to input about 5 volts. This particular um, universal BEC is selectable. There's a little jumper right, right here that you can either use 5 volts or 6 volts and so you wouldn't want to be pushing power back into the BEC uh, if you had that selected at the 6 volt level. Now I seem to recall reading that the uh, Dynam retracts like 5 volts so I have this one set at 5 volts. Well, how do you connect that into the powertrain? Well, there's a couple of ways. One, you can solder it in to one of your connectors if you'd like, or what I've done here is I've just bought a pass-through tap. So much like this larger tap breaking off to the sound system, this little pass-through tap is just a short little plastic piece with the plug and socket sides of the XT60 connector, but then it has this JST plug that comes off of it. And so I simply just took um, a set of JSTs, I have the, the kits to make the plugs, um, put the wires from the UBEC into the pins, shoved them into the connector, and then now I can pull this apart if I don't need to use it or if something breaks. Uh, and I didn't have to do any soldering. I'm not a big fan of soldering. I'm not very good at it. So uh, using these little adapters like this, whether it's Dean's or whether it's uh, XT60's like this, for me it's really worth the trouble. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the lights. Now the lights are uh, the LEDs. I chose not to use all of the LEDs that came with the kit, so I've got a set here that I can lay out for you to see. The lights just plug into any empty channel, or if all your channels are full, simply add a Y connector at the, um, the receiver and put the lights into one of the Ys. Now you probably don't want to do that on the gear channel if you're raising and lowering the gear because you run the risk of turning off the lights when uh, you manipulate that, but any of the flight controls, those servos that have channels that are on all the time will then provide power to the LEDs. Now the thing that makes the LEDs really uh, easier to deal with in a kit like I've been telling you about is that it comes with this little controller board. The controller boards vary in shape, size, and colors depending on the brand that you get. Uh, but all of them basically are just a circuit board that has a voltage regulator that gives the LEDs the voltage that they need to be bright and uh, within their limits. And then they have connections along the edges and different connections will do different things. They're programmed by the little integrated circuit here in this controller to do different things. So some of these are steady. For example, the nav lights would be steady on the wingtips. And then some of these are flashing. I've got this one plugged into a flashing one, which might represent the, the strobes on the wingtip or uh, a beacon on the tail, that kind of thing. And so your instructions from your light kit will tell you which one of these sockets to plug your lights in depending upon what you want the LED to do. So let's take a minute and just plug this baby in and we'll see how things work. Okay, as with any model, I've got my transmitter turned on before I'm going to plug in the battery. I reach down here and just plug it in. Okay. 
So we got the little song from the ESC. It got power, it counted three cells in my three cell battery, and it gave me the go. You can see up here, the LEDs are busy flashing brightly, coming from the controller here. If we wanted to see the servo up here, which you see moving right up there, that's coming from the servo channel. That just represents all the servos that you'd have on your airplane. You can see here on the, um, the UBEC, it's got a little LED that shows that it is powered. And then you can see the lights here on the receiver and on the satellite receiver that it is all powered as well. Now the other thing you want to check is the motor rotation. I mentioned that a minute ago. And so you can see here on the motor, I've got just a little bit of uh, painter's tape on the end. So rather than in this disassembled way having a propeller, which could do some damage if something happened, uh, but I still want to see the rotation, then I can uh, just check the rotation with that painter's tape, uh, make the changes to these wires if I need to. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm not going to need to. I know that the thing is rotating the way I want it. And last but not least, let's take a listen to the sound system. This particular sound system only comes with one uh, recorded sound, and, um, but it'll give you a startup kind of sound as you just barely push the throttle forward and then the, the sound of the motor running will change as we advance the throttles. And so um, I'm going to kind of reach underneath here and hold on to the motor so it doesn't vibrate off the table. Uh, and that's another reason why I have that painter's tape on it so I don't uh, uh, lose control of it here. So let's take a listen to the sound system. So all in all, that's pretty cool. It ought to sound really good in the model. We've got the holes drilled in the bottom of the wing, so hopefully the sound will be able to escape from the foam fuselage. Um, but there you have it. We've got all these extra parts in it. Again, we're using the, UB, uh, the Universal BEC or the UBEC here to provide additional power and safety since we have all this extra stuff in the electronic circuit in this model. So here are all the electronics mounted in the aircraft itself. So you can see the battery compartment is up here. I've hollowed that out a little bit because I plan to use four cell batteries in there. So I had to take some of the foam out and I just added some little uh, birch ply shelves in there instead of the foam shelf that held the battery. You can see the speaker right down here, the ESC coming from the motor in the front. You've got the, the uh, receiver, the satellite receiver mounted back here. Down here is the sound system. And then right in here against the wall, I mounted the control board for the lighting circuits. And so it's kind of a mess in there with all the extra wires. I've got some of the wires uh, taped down, but then you can see here is that primary trunk with the, the various uh, connectors and taps in it that'll go up to meet the uh, wire coming out of the battery. So that's it. Fortunately, this particular model had a lot of room in the cockpit, so it was easy to put all of the, um, the electronics and the extra stuff into that area in the fuselage. Well, we've got the airplane all put together, and it pretty much brings this project to a close. Just a couple of things I wanted to point out. You can see on the back of this, I added a couple of little nubs. I used some of that carbon fiber that we used in the reinforcement module uh, to add some fingertip uh, grabs here on the back so we can put that in there. Uh, and then I added a, a birch ply uh, lip here instead of the big thick foam uh, lip at the front of the cockpit because the battery if I'm going to use a four cell just doesn't fit so uh, as I mentioned a second ago I uh, put some shelves in there out of birch ply for some strength without the thickness of the foam uh, and then it just all fits in there uh, very nicely uh, and, it, and it clips right in so it's looking pretty good 
Now another thing you may notice is the decals. Uh, since the front of the model was painted red, the decals were different colors so it would show up on the red. My daughter has a vinyl cutting machine so I got her the uh, Amarillo font and uh, gave her the decal, had her duplicate that in black and then I was able to do the same thing here on the tail with the US Air Force and the tail number uh, because those were orange in the decal set that came uh, with the model. So uh, I've got the other decals on and you can see that it looks pretty good. Now the last thing that I needed to call to your attention was the weight and the balance. Um, even with the speaker put here, uh, you know, just right about here, right on the weight and balance or the center of gravity, uh, I had to add a fair amount of lead to the front. The previous owner had about um, an ounce and a half in the nose. I put about another three ounces in the front. Um, the good news is there's a lot of room in there to do it, uh, but I added a couple of uh, lead plates that I had pulled from the model uh, that had crashed, and then I used a couple of the little Great Plains brand stick-on lead um, uh, pieces so I could put it in there in quarter ounce increments to the point where I could get it to balance uh, perfectly and I've done that so uh, we've got it all together it's looking pretty good I hope you've enjoyed working through this project with me and uh, we'll give a try to one of your old or tired or broken models to bring it back to life